What is up, Squared Nation? Welcome back to No Counters, No Combos, and we want to wish you guys a very happy start to the new year. 2021, I am projecting to be a very big year for us here at the channel, but also for the game of Dragon Ball Super. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of things behind the scenes that Bandai is working on. I'm very excited for it to be part of the mainstream Dragon Ball IP, if you will, with that new Dragon Ball website that's going to include, you know, access to the anime, access to the fighting games, also access to the TCG. So I think it's going to get a lot more um, mainstream attention in 2021. Obviously, Bandai has a secondary game that has been doing really doing really well and quite successful, but I still believe that as far as the IP itself, Dragon Ball is the baby when it comes to Bandai's attention. You know, talking about maybe three to four years into the game, we're already at set 12 and the game's been very successful very quickly. So with that being said, I just want to, you know, say thank you guys for all the support, you know, with my return back in 2020. And here's to another good year in 2021. So, as you can see on the screen here, we're showing off the Sin Shenron deck um, that we had in one of our recent Battle Chamber videos. Shout out to Tristan for giving me his list. Um, this deck is straight up gas. Like, Sin Shenron was pretty much a control deck in set 11. Uh, but with some of the new support that you're getting in set 12, you have the option to pivot to a more aggressive playstyle or go wide playstyle. Um, these monster Sin Shenron cards like the 8 drops and even some of the Nova and Oceana Shenrons you know they're they're pretty nice I mean Oce Nova Shenron himself just constantly fills your drop area with targets for your 8 drop so you can just copy skills and just you know continue to progress your game state and then of course you're sitting on the crutch of having the um, Xeno Cell 12 drop secret rare at your disposal because you can get 12 energy you know or 12 cost worth of battle cards on board super easily as you can see from what happened in the battle chamber video i was able to survive the onslaught um from the um xeno cell but you know ultimately it's just too much of a resource um heavy deck to be able to any you know get any like you know foot up on it i mean i, I feel like weiss is you know in Weiss's defense, I think it's probably one of the weaker decks in set 12, but to be able to kind of like hold your own, like I said in, in, in the Battle Chamber video, I think there's some room for, for mix experimentation there. And of course, you know, because it's a archetype that's built around Goku and Vegeta, you're definitely going to get support in the future. So let's get right into the deck. Uh, if you guys don't know what the leader does, he's a 10k attacker on the front side. Auto, when this card attacks, look at the top five cards from the top of your deck. Add one Shadow Dragon card among them to your hand, then shuffle. So top five for a Shadow Dragon, really pretty good. Um, I kind of prefer the search as opposed to the just draw one because you're thinning out your deck and you're actually searching for combo pieces that are archetype specific. Turlist does the same thing. There are a couple of other decks that, you know, leader wise, they do the same thing when they attack, they look at top five. So I kind of like that better than just drawing a random card and you get to shuffle. So if, in case you put anything at the bottom of your deck or in case you put anything back into the deck, you'll be able to get a shuffle and just mix it up there. And then um, here's another auto at the end of the turn. You can choose up to one of your yellow shadow dragon cards in your battle area and switch it to active mode. Awaken when your life is at three or less, or you have a yellow unison in card with a specified cost of four in play. You can draw two cards, switch one energy to active mode and flip this card over. And then on the awaken side, you have Sin Shenron, a negative energy overflow. Auto, when this card attacks, draw one card. Auto, at the end of your turn, choose all of your yellow shadow dragons in the battle area and switch them to active mode and then he has a really sweet activate main for six yellow energy you can play up to seven shadow dragon cards with different names from your drop area so basically sin shenron kind of puts you on a clock um, being able to control your board with its like you know control aspects with the nine drop being able to you know negate skills except for etbs or you know enter battle autos um once he gets to six energy if you can tap those six yellow energy and play just a multitude of shadow dragons from the drop area you kind of just lose i mean it's really hard to combat that even if you're not getting all seven out on the board because they have to be different names you have a, a good amount of targets that can pressure i mean nova shenron's a 15 ice shenron's a 15k um ocean Oce oceana shenron's a 20k then you have your sin shenron's who are they're huge you have 19ks you have 30ks um you also have your haze shenron so 
there's a couple different targets for that effect to go off if you get to six energy and being able to put your opponent on a clock just giving them the ultimatum of you have to kill me before six or i'm just gonna swarm the board with all my dragons it's kind of uncomfortable and the way tristan has a deck built you can see he has the option of pivoting to an early game kill or you can play that long game if you want to you know go based off of resource management so the leader itself is really good awakening at three it's okay um you just kind of uber defensively with yellow just because you have all the revenge blockers and stuff like that and just blockers in general i think awakening at three is okay but being able to draw two and untap one i guess there's that balancing factor and then awakening at uh you know the alternative awakening condition by having a unison with a specified cost of four you really only have mecha kibura at your disposal and if you're tapping forward to play mecha kibura you probably should already be awakened by that point but just in case you're not you have the option of tapping four playing Mechie Kabura and Awakening with a higher life total if you need to. Um, Sin Shenron does have that alternative Awakening condition um, but if you control a Unison, but he doesn't have to take life down to 6. So like when you're looking at Whis, Whis has a similar Awakening condition. If you control a Unison with a specified cost of 2, you can Awaken and take life up to your, to your at 6, and then you can you know flip this card over, yada, yada, yada. But Sin Shenron doesn't have that caveat there. He could just flip and do his untap 1, draw 2 as long as you have the unison. So you could awaken with a really healthy life total if you want to play uber defensive. Now, as we're looking at the cards in the deck, you know, combination of extra cards, battle cards, unison, so on and so forth. Um, there's a couple of highlights that I want to go over that you might not know of. This is pretty standard for your Sin Shenron. You have your, your one star negative energy Dragon Ball. You have your Haze Chain. You have your Sin Chain with the four drop into the nine drop. Um, you have your, your counter plays. You have pretty much... Um, a couple of things that we're aware of from set 10 and set 11 but a couple of the highlight cards I want to go over that we don't really know too much of because they're coming out in set 12 so um, Nimbus you know Nimbus is Nimbus you can afford to use Nimbus because you have blockers so if you pitch cards to the drop area it's fine it's not counterintuitive because that card that you're negging in your hand is now going to be a target for your 8 drop to copy the skill so it's completely fine Zamasu is probably the best yellow super combo in the game um just being able to rest your opponent's threats and just kind of extend that game is really nice he's playing a 2-2 split with a krillin I, I can definitely see the advantage of having a krillin because you definitely want to see more pieces for your combos and you might want to shuffle stuff back into the deck or put stuff at the bottom of the deck so that you can fetch it out from the deck but i like 2-2 split if it were me personally i'd probably just go for Zam zamasus because i feel like because you're you're committing so much to the board, you probably don't need too much draw power in this deck. Uh, I'd rather just kind of stop my opponent's plays and just kind of protect my board. So if it was me, I'd probably just go four Zamasus. I'm not really a fan of 2-2 two -two splits with super combos. If for me, it's either four of one or four of the other. I haven't really committed to that just yet, but obviously I'm not playing the deck. Tristan is, and he's had a lot more um, success in testing, so this is probably the ratio that he decided to choose. Cell Zeno Cell, you know, self-explanatory. If you have 12 on board, you can play him for free. He's a dual attack quad strike, rips three cards out of your opponent's hand. There, there, there cannot be, there's, there cannot be, there's not more that needs to be said about this card. Uh, Meki Kibora Unison is really interesting. I like the minus four of being able to take control of um, one of your opponent's cards. I do like the fact that he has blocker skills as well. Uh, it's just really interesting. It's a really interesting unison. I think it's expensive at four. That's why Tristan's probably only playing three of these, but I think in this strategy it's necessary, especially with that minus four. If you can get that minus four off, it's pretty nifty. Um, we have our basic sin stuff here um, that, we're, that we're pretty familiar with. You might not know what the two-drop Ice Shenron does. Basically, he's a counterplay. Uh, you can play him for two if, you're, if your leader is yellow. Um, the card that's being played is played in rest mode instead. So this can target any battle card re regardless of cost. Uh, it gets around barrier because it's part of the counter the counterplay skill. And you can also tap unison. So if your opponent plays a big hefty unison, um, you can actually respond uh, with Ice Shenron and tap it down as long as it's a cost four or less. So if your opponent, you know, is tapping five for the unison you can't do it but if it's four or less you can and then the new stuff we have the eight drop shenron which is a powerhouse you can bring him out for one if you meet the requirement and then basically just once per turn he copies something in the drop area he copies the skills until the end of your opponent's next turn so the the really nice combo is being able to have um nova on board and just kind of burst so that you can get your your guys in the drop area and then with your a drop you copy oceanus oceanus is really good it's a 20k barrier blocker um, 
and having another you know blocker on board in combination with the nine drop since it's an, a revenge blocker these are two 30k blockers that your opponent has to deal with and one of them is barrier so it's just a lot to get rid of you don't have to worry about um holding up your blockers because of sin shenron's um, leader skill being able to untap your cards at the end of the turn so you can go ahead and just turn sideways and then you're just gonna get that defense right back the next turn and then i think the best card uh that tristan was showing me here was this two drop uh oceanus shenron um that you're getting in set 12 basically when you combo with this card uh you can restand one of your um Sin Sh or shadow dragon so basically he's like a zarbon for the archetype but it's really good because if you block and you just throw a 5k at it you can restand and you get another block out of it uh, which is really good and if you're if you're revenge blocking something that's 30k and you want to survive the attack you can combo the five restand the blocker and then revenge procs getting rid of the battle cards especially if you're playing against dark broly they poop out 30k battle cards super easily so i just like this nifty combination and then dragon thunder is really good in my opinion it's like a senzu bean for the shadow dragon r type um which as you can see they already have a lot of beef um you know on board with the, the the astronomical amounts of attack that they have but giving 5k to your leader is really nice because now on top of fighting around blockers and, and and fighting for board you now have the option of of increasing the attack of your leader which is going to make it that much more difficult um for your opponent to attack in without committing any combo power to it so i just think it's in a really nice spot i think three is like the perfect number i don't think you want to see too many of this card you're probably only going to resolve like one or two of these per game if anything and then the last card I forget this guy's name, but he's part of the Naturon Shenron chain. Um, I think he's one of the promo packs. I think that's the winner card. Tristan didn't actually use this card in our game, so I'm not exactly sure what the application is. He's only playing a one of, but maybe it's just one of those things where you just kind of like it's a gotcha card. Um, but like I said, I mean, this is the this is the deck that he was playing in the battle chamber video. Um, there's probably room for some tweaks you know just to iron out some ratios and stuff like that maybe make some tech choices maybe try to fit in some overrealm depending on you know late game stuff like that but um you know i, I don't argue with results obviously you know we, we played a couple of games i got spanked obviously we only posted the one game for for the for the channel but we did play a couple of games i wasn't able to to you know to get out of it so uh, i think if you're a sin shenron player you're happy moving into set 12 because you can build the deck probably like two or three different ways depending on your play style um shout out to the boy carlos uh, in our play group here in pa he's a huge fan of sin shenron and I'm, I'm i'm sure he's really excited uh to get his hands on some of these cards going into set 12 so that's pretty much the deck profile guys uh let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below you can find this deck profile on apexdecks.com it's publicly listed so all you have to do is go on the site You'll be able to search by, uh, probably by my username, which is just NCX2. But I'm also going to put a link to the deck itself in the description box below. So if you're curious as to where to start, this is definitely a, a good place to do so. Also, the Turles deck is on Apex decks as well, which is basically the... It's really the only deck builder that I use nowadays. I don't really use Shenron's Lair anymore, and I never really use DBS decks. So I, I just prefer Apex. I like the layout a lot better. Um, so like I said, you can check them out in the description box below. I'll put links to everything there. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, we're starting off 2021 really strong here. No counters, no combos. Uh, we're working on something behind the scene, like I mentioned before, with a lot of other content creators. Hopefully we can start rolling that out to you guys little by little. Um, but with that said, we're going to get on out of here. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. You can stay up to date with everything, no counters, no combos. We really do appreciate the love and support, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Be there or be square.